The torch of the Dungeons and Dragons Olympic Games will rise above the stadium in which the characters compete for honor and glory. The original structure was built long ago from a standing stone found naturally in the location. Because it is found in that location, it matches the geology of the region. And because I have several other columns that are hexagonal in cross-section, this torch will be perched atop such a column. I will not be able to make this column look like stone after I've placed the stairs in. Particularly, the texturing step would be very difficult, and painting would be uh, too much trouble as well. So it's a good idea to make it look like stone before I put anything else on. I want the torch to light up and to flicker like natural flame. So a tea light is a perfect light source. But the tea light does not reach all the way from the top to the bottom. And I want the switch to be on the bottom. So I will need to carve a recess in the bottom and run a wire up through the top. To carve a recess, first cut around uh, parallel to the side of the column and then cut out a wedge shape around the circle, finally prying out the center of the circle so that there's enough room for the major part of the tea light's body. I also removed the top of the tea light to make more room in my somewhat cramped hole in the bottom of the pillar being careful with the switch because the switch is partly held in place by that cap on the tea light. The next step is to puncture a hole all the way through the center of the column with a skewer. This is where the wire will bring electricity from the battery and switch up to the LED. I'm using the same LED as came in the tea light. I tore a pair of the colored wires from inside a Cat5 cable for this. I recommend wire strippers to bear the ends of the wires so that they're easy to solder on or otherwise attach to the LED, but if you don't have them, a, an X-Acto knife or any kind of blade will work as long as you're careful. Now it's time to solder the LED into the upper end of the Cat5 wires. First applied some solder to the wire and then remelted it to attach it to the LED. I left plenty of room so that I can work on it without uh, getting in the way. And I can paint the column without interference. The most potentially problematic part of this build is getting the switch to work. One wire goes through the black part and comes in contact with the edge of the battery while the other one rests against the upward facing side of the battery. This way it touches both poles of the battery and the current can flow up into the LED and back down. Getting the wires of the appropriate length so that they can touch the battery is a little bit tricky and may require a little bit of fiddling. I bisected a one and a half inch diameter styrofoam ball to make the bowl in which the flame will rest atop the torch. Using the same skewer I used to make the hole for the wire, I made a hole through the hemisphere of styrofoam so that the LED would fit, and then I gouged out a bowl in that hemisphere of styrofoam, uh, first trying to use a hot nail to melt the shape. When that didn't work all that well, I resorted to using my craft knife and cut away the unwanted material so that I could fill it with something translucent, hot glue, and then cover it with something to resemble coal that might burn for a long time while the games are in progress. My method of cutting out the interior of the bowl 
to hold the flames and the styrofoam itself were not as smooth as the metal that I envisioned the bowl being. So I mixed up some plaster to cover the inside and outside with the plan of sanding it smooth so that I could paint it with a realistic metal sheen. Once the plaster was dry, I used 400 grit sandpaper to smooth it. I like to imagine dwarven smiths pounding away at this metal until it is completely smooth and beautiful brass. After adding further adornments, they labored to bring it to the top of this tall pillar and set it alight for some sort of ancient games, and it is now revived in the modern D&D Olympics. To protect my now smooth plaster-covered styrofoam, I painted the outside of the bowl with Mod Podge and black paint. This also acted as an adhesive for some decorations. I cut small styrofoam balls in half and used these small balls to cover the torch. It is not lost on me that this design begins to resemble half of a COVID-19 virus and uh, that I feel is appropriate because that virus is the reason that we are missing out on the 2020 Summer Olympics and we'll have to wait till 2021 to enjoy them. So it is actually the virus that is the impetus for making this torch. I continued by painting the pillar like stone first with black Mod Podge, then dark gray, and then a dry brush of light gray. I followed my dry brushing with a light sponging of a brick red, which I always imagine uh, to be giving the impression of garnets here and there among the crystals of some sort of granitic stone, and then a bit of silver, perhaps uh, representing the mica that might form or some other sort of shiny mineral. And then a wash of very watered down black paint to emphasize the recesses and cracks in the rock. I painted the inside of the torch bowl itself uh, red and the outside orange as orange is a good base coat for bronze. <laughs> I set this aside to dry. For the old iron bars the dwarves pounded into the stone to hold up the steps, I used elegant toothpicks. These I placed into the corrugations of a piece of cardboard to hold them in place as I painted them with gunmetal paint. Broke everyday toothpicks in half to make boards of the appropriate length to cross between the two stakes of iron driven in by those dwarves while making the stairway around the column of the torch. of these I stained with Army Painter Strong Tone. Before breaking the other half, I stained them with Army Painter Flesh Wash.
I used a toothpick to space out and pre-bore the holes into which the iron spikes would be driven. This also allowed me to paint the rust streaking out from those stakes that had so long stood there above the field of competition. I did not place these spike holes at natural intervals, but rather at intervals that would allow the stairs to be playable. This means that they'd be spaced far apart and be very wide. An advantage to this is that it looks like a more extreme climb to get to the top. I tried to apply the rust along the contours in the stone that rust would naturally flow down in a standing column. I hope that the combined effect of the rust flowing out of these holes into which the spikes would be driven and the weathering on the wood would give an appearance of an ancient column built long ago. I also applied some rust color to one side of each spike. Was it the rust? I overbrushed the gunmetal with bright silver. Cut off the tips of the toothpicks with a pair of pliers so that they would not go too deep into the pillar. When I put the toothpicks in, they didn't go into the holes too well, so I did need to use a toothpick to bore out those holes once again. Then I dipped each toothpick in some glue and placed it into its hole. Before placing all of the toothpicks in their holes, I tried out one step to see how it would look. I liked the look, so I continued. One of the things that I like about how I'm putting the steps on is that I'm using two colors of wood, which gives a lot more visual interest to the stairs. first couple of steps, I put glue on each of the boards crossing the spikes to attach them. But after a while, I started spreading glue along the edge of each spike, and this was much faster. My goal with my placement of these slats was to make it look as if they had either been hastily constructed or had had some damage to them over time, um, and in any case had not been put on as carefully as the infrastructure beneath them had been built, as if they were built by some later 
generation and um, only on top of the former glory of some ancient and powerful kingdom. undercoat, it took several coats of bronze paint to give the look that I was hoping for. going to paint the decorative bulges a different color, I still wanted to give the main bowl a highlight, so I used gold paint on top of the brass to try to give a little bit of highlight to the spherical bronze color. I then painted each ball with gunmetal and then highlighted it with silver. want my terrain to be playable. This is a tall piece and so is inherently unstable, especially when putting miniatures on the stairs that are off to the side. So it's important to make as stable a base as possible. But I also wanted this piece to be able to be placed in different settings. I poked a bunch of nails into the base. They would be hidden by the switch and the battery. This would give it some stability because of the weight of the nails at the base of the structure. Even this wasn't enough and I ended up flattening the base by putting hot glue on the bottom and then pressing it down on a piece of parchment paper to make as flat a base as possible. And with those two things combined, it worked fine. I covered the leads of the LED with electrical tape to keep them from shorting out. This will be very important as I will not be able to fix a short later. The entire apparatus will be covered in hot glue. I glued the LED in place with a dab of hot glue first. Then I applied some hot glue to the spot where the wire goes into the column and I pulled the wire down and pressed the bowl into the hot glue. I had to work quickly so that the wire was not stuck. I filled the entire bowl of the torch with hot glue so that the light would disperse through it and make a nice glow. Then I dabbed a little bit more hot glue right into the center and pulled it out into a long slender flame. I cut the flame to shape and then with the light on so I could see how much light continued to shine through, I put super glue on top of the hot glue and then sprinkled sand on top to give the appearance either of some flaming material inside fine stone or perhaps charcoal. To enhance the appearance 
appearance of heat, I painted the entire base of the coal bed yellow, and then with orange along the midsection, about two-thirds of the way out, and then on the very outermost part, I painted it red. Over all of this, I gave a black dry brush to give the appearance of coals or stones that were hot underneath, but somewhat cooler on top. The torch is now ready to preside over the Olympic Games of Dungeons and Dragons, or whatever other sort of ritual or ceremony may come about in my campaigns. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please give a like and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your valor. Thank you.